The only reason I haven't heard any of these assholes equating the murder hornets with the scorpion horse locust from Revelation is that they haven't read the goddamn book. Right? Like, I mean, the apocalypse watchers are just having a field day with this pandemic shit, aren't they? Because plague is so biblical, God. Hell, the first horseman of the apocalypse is even pestilence. Or, or it's, it's war or the breakup of a great empire or the coming of the Antichrist. But like, but like one of the common interpretations of the first horseman of the apocalypse was infectious disease even before all this COVID-19 shit started to happen, huh? Maybe you've seen that meme where they pull the, uh, the 666 out of Corona. See, see, if you assign each letter its corresponding number, A for one, B for two, et cetera, and then you add up the value of all the letters in Corona, you get 66. Plus, hold on, it gets better. Corona has six letters in it. Six, six, six. Never mind that coronavirus is one word. <laughs> that would be, well, that would be 11,155. That fucks up the whole thing. Also, never mind that it's a category of virus that includes all kinds of shit and that the virus causing this particular disease is SARS-CoV-2, spelled like a fucking online banking password but if you just use part of one of the words and then add the numbers up of the letters you get 666 sort of if you cheat obviously that's what god was warning about in the book and he couldn't think of a more direct way of saying hey look out for a pandemic in 2020 because you know he figured we'd be adding up a lot of numeric codes by now and speaking english <laughs> but, but but my favorite effort in this regard, is the 11-step parade of horribles that's spilling out of Rick Wiles right now. He's got it that Bill Gates is going to develop a cure, or I'm sorry, wait, rather, he's already developed a cure alongside of his development of this virus itself and will soon release the cure, but it's no traditional cure. No, it's a microchip. How does a microchip fight a virus? Go fuck yourself. Rick is talking. So once Gates' microchip is out there, People can get it implanted in themselves, thereby creating some sort of cyborgian immunity that will allow them to go out even as others are still forced to stay in place. Forced? Yes, forced. But how, you may ask, if you're not fucking yourself as per instructions, will the authorities that will soon be roaming the streets and forcing the national lockdown know that you've received your immunity chip? Why, they'll have to check for the ID chip on the back of your hand and, and, just to be sure you're not faking it, they'll have to take your temperature using your what? That's right, your fucking forehead, Mark of the Beast. This always seems so goddamn weird to me. They, they pour over that book desperately looking for these hidden clues and numerological warnings that the apocalypse is nigh, but like, like their apocalypse includes a seven-headed dragon rising up in a goddamn ocean like he's about to fight Godzilla. That happens fairly early on. I feel like we just wait for that to happen, <laughs> right? Fucking seven-headed dragon comes waddling up on Long Beach one day, and we're going to, like, we'll all look to ourselves and go, hey, look at that, uh, 10 crowns, fucking Christians nailed it. So why the fuck you got to go looking for the Antichrist? Just wait for the dragons to show up, and then you'll know for sure. And don't give me that it's metaphorical shit, because I fucking know it's metaphorical. Hell, I even know what it's a metaphor for. But you can't have it selectively metaphorical. The seven-headed dragon can't represent the Roman Empire if the scorpion locusts represent scorpions. Scorpion hornets. That's not how fucking metaphors work. If the symbol on your forehead and your back of your hand represents a symbol on the forehead and the back of your hand, you're not doing metaphors anymore. You're just making predictions and getting some of them wrong or, or all of them wrong in this case. But thus is the arrogance and willful ignorance of Christianity. Right, They have a personal relationship with the creator of the universe who loves them unconditionally with the greatest imaginable love. And they know that this is true because a the guy they paid to tell them that told them that. Once you've already cleared that level of delusional self-worth, it's nothing to tack on the belief that against all odds and evidence, you live in the end of days. It's a feeling that, as near as we can tell, has been shared by every fucking Christian at every fucking time throughout history. All of them somehow certain that the fact that everybody else who thought it was wrong made it more likely that it would be right this time. And I'm hardly the first person to point out that believing one lives at the cusp of the end times makes for some shitty long-term planning. Look, we live at the absolute height of civilization. I don't doubt we'll reach higher climbs in the future, but we have not reached them in the past. 
right? I get that a lot of people in this world are suffering and that there's a lot of misery, but still, there's never been a better time in human history when so many people had so much freedom, when there was so much abundance and so much convenience. There are problems in this world to solve. Yes, absolutely. And there are people who have largely been left off of all this progress. But if you measure human history by the average person's quality of life, we live at the current apex of all of humanity. But that, see, but that doesn't fit with their fucking theology. Their theology demands a broken world, and it damn sure can't abide a world that got better as it got less Christian. And, and so every war is ushering in the end times. Every earthquake is a harbinger of the apocalypse. Every new technology is a tool of the Antichrist. And every word or phrase that can be made to add up to 666 is a sign of the goddamn devil. And when a tragedy that is truly unusual comes along and causes great suffering over a wide area, they fucking revel in it. They point to it as this long-awaited sign of vindication. They kept screaming that this amazing world that humanism had crafted was flawed and terrible, despite all the evidence to the contrary. And so in this pandemic, they see society getting its comeuppance. Make no mistake, in the war between humanity and this virus, an awful lot of Christians are on COVID-19 side. And if that sounds hyperbolic, I challenge you to find any asshole anywhere in this fucking country that's been out protesting lockdowns and, and stay at home orders and mask regulations and ask them who their Lord and Savior is.